the media. It ain't what it used to be. I'm Morton Dean. On this report of the media, journalism in crisis, we focus on television news, cable TV, and the internet. As a young reporter, I, like most of my colleagues, learned the importance of the five W's and the one H. In each story we reported, these basic questions had to be answered. Who, what, where, when, why, and how? Nowadays, these are questions being asked about the media itself. Who's responsible for the distrust of the media felt by so many Americans? What's gone wrong? When will things change for the better? Where's the business headed? Why is so much of the mass media owned by only half a dozen giant corporations? And how can a business that's so essential to the success of democracy, our democracy, right itself? How did a trusted source of news go from the hallowed days of Edward R. Murrow, Doug Edwards, Walter Cronkite, Chet Huntley, David Brinkley, and Peter Jennings to today's growing distrust, dismissal, and anger aimed squarely at the media. At NBC Nightly News, we have all day to look up at all the cable channels on the monitors in the newsroom and distill what we see. Think about it, run it by some experts, put it on the air. When I was in cable, it was instantaneous. Not that we wouldn't put it through the same traps and checks, but there is more pressure to turn it around, get it on. From even-tempered treatment on TV and radio, we now have fluffy news light and shouting attacks interspersed with numerous commercials. One at a time. Okay. Now, what seems to make it the most, and which is why they're watching cable, is everybody screams, everybody gives their opinion, and they're considered journalists, and indeed they are. And that's very different. As corporate conglomerations continue to get larger, cross-partnerships create fewer sources of news. The media scoreboard needs to be checked and updated frequently. What we've got is a kind of capital process that's about taking over the market. And the media is no different. The media in corporate hands is no different. It's not good enough to have a station or a channel or a newspaper or a radio station. You want them all because then you've really got a profit center. You don't have to compete with anybody. Does the sheer mass of today's multimedia information available to the instant access generation make the answer the Internet? An increasing number of television manufacturers seem to think so, strenuously working to make Internet access a standard feature on future television sets. We are in a situation in America where if anybody wants news, there's more information available than ever before in human history. You not only have the three traditional networks, you have, uh, you have cable news all the time, you have, um, you have C-SPAN, which is the equivalent of a transcription service, you have uh, the internet all the time, you have a national public radio bringing you in-depth coverage from around the world. While some say it may be premature to tell if the internet is the great equalizer, the tech-savvy user will function not just as viewer, but as editor, by weeding through the unregulated, unfiltered, and Wild West Internet sites. Are we stuck with what passes for news these days? Certainly, the glory age of television news is over. Hopefully, news consumers will find reliable sources that over time can be counted on for credible and trustworthy information. I'm Morton Dean. What happened to trusted journalism? For answers, watch the documentary, read the companion book, listen to the audiobook, download the ebook. Get the story on The Media Journalism in Crisis.